Because I think we've got first to start. Not easy, is it? Do we know? Do we have to start on a nice first? It doesn't matter. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Rugged Podcast, where we talk about video game news, sometimes movies, sometimes TV, but mostly video game related news. I'm Adam. And I'm Mike. And we're going to be talking to you for the next, I don't know, half an hour or so, just about what's going on and what to expect and what's really happened in the world of games. So, with that, let's get cracking. What do we start off with? Sounds good. Let's start off with. Hmm. Ubisoft. That's right at the top of the title. Might as well look at that. Uh, so Assassin's Creed Odyssey is something we mentioned last week, which is getting a creator mode, or story creator. <laughs> They've already tinkered with it, because, of course, story creator means that you can make whatever stories you want, and part of this was to make a story which will allow you to farm XP. But that's something you can actually purchase in-game using real money, and so Ubisoft were very quick to cut that one out. That's a surprise. Mm-hmm. Anything to do with microtransactions, and they cut it all out. I mean, you know, you've already made some money off the game, but you can make more money. We've had one money, yes, but what about second money? Yes, yeah. second and third. And third money, yeah. yeah. Plenty of money to make. Yeah. Well, that doesn't surprise me. It does not surprise me whatsoever that they decide to, uh, oh, I know, we can make more money. Let's not give people the chance of farming. Quite. But then again, is it using something to get around something farming xp it is a bit of an this exploit a, well so this is what irritates me but a, a lot of games you play now is that i don't mind if you do have to do a bit of grinding sometimes that's the case yeah it's fine i'm okay with that but when it's more effort, when it seems like a chore to actually get to the point you want to get into in the game that kills the fun for me you know it's just one of those where it's like you ever play resident evil no, I don't really play them, to be fair. Okay. Not really a franchise I've, I've played much on, unless it's in the arcades. With the... Red Dead Redemption, you played that? I have. Original Red Dead Redemption. Yes. Okay, you remember when you killed an animal and you went to skin it? So every time you skinned it, you had to watch that animation. And at the first time you watched it, you went, oh, that's really cool. But by the 80th or 90th or 200th time, you go, oh, God. I can't be arsed with it anymore. There's plenty of games like that, though, isn't there? Yeah, but this is the thing. It's repetitive, and it stops being fun, and it just becomes just a real chore. chore yeah. A chore. Yeah. As, as you say, it's just basically a chore. Yeah. Speaking of chores, uh, there's some kids that are going to have to do a lot of chores. <laughs> Look at that. What, a, what an amazing segue. That's just a uh, seamless segue. Yeah. Look at that. Yes. They're going to have to... For FIFA. Yeah, for FIFA. Um, we already mentioned we don't play FIFA. Um... I can't do that to myself anymore. However, <laughs> on the top, we're going to stay right on topic with microtransactions. FIFA, uh, of course, has packs that you can purchase in game. These kids were on the Nintendo Switch. First of all, this is a family, mother, father, and four kids. If you have four kids, you're fucking insane. No one has four kids. It's, I couldn't fathom what it's like to have four kids in the house. No. But understandably, the kids, uh, after they got the dad to purchase one pack, um, from the you know ultimate team thing where you get to get different players and things like that. Uh, the kids figured out how to replicate that. There was no password protection on buying it. Bad on the parents' part, admittedly, yes, they shouldn't have done that, but at the same time, it shouldn't be incentivized in a way so that ultimate team really needs you to, you know, you really need to buy packs. And the easiest way to do it, instead of, again, farming and grinding, is again, just put some That was a controversy originally from FIFA, was the fact that you couldn't get some of them players unless you purchased the pack. Or they were just so many hours that you had to play to get them that yeah. basically it was just impossible. And it tied in with Star Wars Battlefront 2, exact same thing. Mm-hmm. You, you, they worked it out where you had to play so many ridiculous amounts of hours to earn the credits to, pa- to pay for Luke Skywalker or Darth Vader. They were the ones everybody wanted. So obviously, everybody paid all the money. And it's, it's a funny thing is actually, now to look into this, I did a bit of digging. And I figured out that one of the main reasons that AA are fighting this, uh, I suppose, investigation as to whether microtransactions can be considered gambling mm, is yeah. because if they are considered gambling, FIFA, Madden, NBA 2K, which I think is that an, I think that's an EA title. Might not be, I'm not yes. too sure. But all the sports games that they do have to raise their age rating because they're three oh, plus. Of course, yeah. Because it's gambling, you have to put it to, I think, 15, which of course kills. Again, if parents have to depends pay attention, state. depends what state in the US it could yeah, be higher true. in some states. In the UK, in the UK I think it's fifteen. It has to be fifteen, um, which of course means then it's they can't. Well, they can't. They're not allowed to market it to one of the main audiences, which is the said ten to fourteen, ten to fifteen year olds. So that kills half. Well, a large portion of their uh, audience. Yeah. Although, do parents ever pay attention to age ratings on games? No. 
No. No, I don't, I don't think. I don't think it's the. I, I I've played eighteen plus games before I was eighteen. Oh, yeah, everybody 18. has. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're hard. You know what I mean. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to get a game. I wanted to get um no actually that's all like I wanted to get GTA. I think it was San Andreas at the time, and I asked. This is a personal story. I asked my grandma to go and get it, and my mum said because it was an eighteen. She said I don't think you should ask your grandma to go and get GTA San Andreas. And I went oh, okay. So I just went to the letter and got it myself with my dad. So it's fine. I, I don't think know. game stores really take any notice of the the ratings. They should do, but they don't. No, they do because they can get fined for it and they get. Well, it's, I know it's a lot. If the yeah. parents are with them, it doesn't matter. Because, yeah. but yeah, otherwise no. But leading on from Akatan's actions, what? I mean, there are certain things. There, there are a lot of things now. There are free to play games, or pay to play. There are subscription games. There, you know, like you've got the likes of Eve and stuff like that. Eve is, has got a massive, real money economy behind it because it makes that much money. You know, and players can earn that money or or spend on that money and. You know, League of Legends, free to play, it's one of the biggest games on streaming. Dota, same again. All these games are all free to play. And then you can purchase cosmetic stuff, mm. you know, skins and stuff like that. But then you've got the games like FIFA, Battlefront, you know, and the various other games coming out there where, they're, where they're like, oh, if you want a character, then you've got to pay. Mm. Or you spend so many ridiculous amounts of hours getting it. And then obviously you've got your typical just buy your game and play it. But it's, I think now, some way or another, a game has microtransactions. Battlefront, uh, sorry, Battlefield. What's the what's the what do you call it? The pass that you get the the what season pass? Season pass, yeah. Is it not another microtransaction? I would argue that season passes are extra content for the game, so I don't think that's okay. So it's a bit of a weird one. So I, I, I might it is, technically it could be considered a microtransaction, but it wouldn't be considered a loot box or a, no, anything no, 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 I know that I get that, but neither would a cosmetic item. If you're I, buying an actual skin, I'm going to look up what microtransaction means because I think microtransaction is an in-app or in-game purchase on top of the which is exactly yeah. what a game pass is. You're exactly right. Let me give me two ticks. Let me micro. Well, you just you just trans prove me right. Yeah, I just wanted to double check and make sure. Uh, definition. Let's see, shall we? A very small financial transaction conducted online. Oh, that means anything. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, that's a broad horizon. Know, that's that's yeah, that's quite vague. Uh, well, so it is all microtransactions. So looking back at it, is it really? I got a cheese grater. I think that's a microtransaction. It cost me less than a tenner. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe all my Amazon purchases are microtransactions. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. So that is really. I've that... not bought something new. I've made a microtransaction. That didn't help at all. <laughs> no. Oh. And I think I think we're supposed to answer questions, not raise more. I know. Shit. No. But I think the, the problem with microtransactions these days is, is is there's such a broad array of them in so many different styles and ways that that games really nowadays you don't just buy a game to play it. Like what, Crash Bandicoot you used to buy it, play it, get Crash Bandicoot too. I am gonna say no. There is no microtransactions in that game whatsoever. No, because it's just a remake. That's true, but it's they've done it right. Crash Team Racing, for example, there is in-game currency. You can't use real money to get more in-game currency, which I think is a good idea. What they do is they try and force you to go online, then race online, which is fine. I'm perfectly fine with that because you get about ten times the amount of what you would do in a local right, race, yeah. which I think is yeah, great idea. But there is, as far as I'm such would for now, we're okay. There's no real money in game purchases. But 95% of the games you play now yeah, yeah. has some way of yeah. buying more out of it. And is it right? Is it fair? Um, again, people will always vote with the wallet. And when it comes down to it, if someone wants to take the plunge and pay a small amount of money to get whatever they want to get, then yeah, it's fine. However, it also ties into gambling which can be an addiction so if you're trying to get something specific let's say I don't know you're in uh, you're in FIFA and you're trying to get Messi as a player for your ultimate team that's very very hard that's a tiny percentage of a chance to actually get that and if it's that gambling again it's that you just feed the machine feed the machine and eventually you'll get a pair but when will that pair come Overwatch we both play for Overwatch Mm -hmm. how many times have we tried getting something in them loot boxes and it's been like I haven't, yeah, I think there's a theory with those loot boxes. So I think you get a good loot box and then five or six nothing and then good loot box again. I think that's how it works. But you're still 
I'm fine with that. Yeah. I mean, I get pissed off when I get a load of sprays and you know voice lines, but I think I'm the same. Fun. I'm not too fussed. I don't play that much to want to get something out of it. But there we go. Well, that's that's the topic on loot boxes. Let us know what you think. Your opinions on loot boxes are they the right thing? You know, microtransactions in general are they are they the right thing to go about if you want more content within a game, or should game developers just charge more for a game and include the whole content? You know, this game's going to have five add-ons, so you're going to pay eighty quid. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Our next topic is... Quick topic. Nintendo Switch Lite. They're making a oh, light it's Switch. Shit. It's like a regular Switch, but it's not a Switch. I don't know why they call it a Switch. It doesn't have any features that... Okay, so it's you can't dock it on a TV. You can't remove the side Joy-Cons. So it's like a Game Boy. It's just, just like another 3DS, except without the 3D part. Mm. Or the S part. Oh, so it's, so it's useless. Yeah, I'm not going to get one. I've already got a proper Switch. So. You've got a Switch? Yeah. Apparently there is rumours about an actual more powerful Switch coming out sometime in the future. An actual proper fully fledged, you know, full fat Switch. Full fat Switch. Um, we'll have to see. But yeah, other than that... Oh, actually, I've got a funny story. I like this one. Okay, so I'm going to have to show you this video because I want to get your reaction from this. I don't think you've seen this. So, a politician in Pakistan has mistaken a GTA, uh, GTA 5 stunt video for real life. Now, I want to show you this video. I accept. No, I will not accept. Reject. Uh, I want to show you this video. Let me know what you think. Would this fool you? No, not that. This is the video in question. Here we go. Well, no, you can tell it's fair. It's, well, it's, what, do you, what game do you think that is? Even though I've just told you. Well, I know what it is. Yeah. The only thing is, they've used a skin for that plane. So there's a, an Airbus A380, and they've actually used a skin to make it look like an Airbus A380. So that's the slight bamboozlement I will see, but that is very clearly a game. Plus that, no camera moves like that. Look at this. The camera is clearly a floating camera. It's a virtual camera. Might be a drone. Well then, yeah, okay, possibly. All right, okay, I can, I can argue that point. But then it slows down. The drone still moves at regular speed and <laughs> everything slows down. The drone sped up. Either way, the point is, I just thought it was a funny little thing to mention. Um, the truck doesn't have any suspension. <laughs> That's the giveaway. <laughs> it right. literally drives on a linear line. This is this is speaking from someone who actually knows a lot about this kind of stuff. So <laughs> I, drive I would trucks, never right? have I would never have pointed <laughs> that way. Look at the truck and he just goes. <laughs> <laughs> I would, yeah, see I would have never noticed that, but there you go. So you look. See, Not now you mentioned this, I can't play this game anymore. You've ruined it for me. <laughs> Unplayable. No bumps. Oh, and when it breaks, stops, it just no, stops. There's no shaking. Oh, damn it. Oh, for God's sake. Right, mate. Physics. Right, well, I'll give up a GTA. Physics. <laughs> lazy, lazy developers. Lazy. <laughs> well, it's probably whoever's put it up. So I just thought it was a funny little thing. Um, the link's going to be in the bottom. Uh, definitely check it out because it is... It's just bizarre, really. I'll try and put a little video up for those who are watching on YouTube. Oh yeah, go on. I'll put your yeah, I'll put your uh, editing test to the sk uh, oh. editing skills to the test. Awesome. Okay, the main story we have for today is G2A. G2A. Apparently, yes. they've been caught sending pre-written articles to news sites. Yes. Uh, you've had a bit of review in this, haven't you? I had a bit of a shuffle around and then a bit of a dig and see what's going on with this. So that I can actually bring this up as well. Let's find the article in question. So G2A, of course, is a court Steam or game key reseller. Um, they've had a lot of criticisms over the years, and in fact, indie developers now have actually pirated their own games just to make sure that G2A don't get any profits from it because I guess indie developers more than anyone get a real poor cut of the uh, of the cake I guess when it comes to that kind of stuff yeah they tend to yeah there we go okay so there was two pictures that uh, one of the journalists I guess posted onto Twitter a guy called Thomas F I want to say his Faust. name Faust yes uh, from Gamescom and uh, hi he's not from Gamescom he's going soon Gamescom my name is Adrian and I represent a global digital marketplace called G2A.com. Our company is one of the biggest and most popular trading platforms in the world. It is a place where buyers and sellers of games and other digital and physical goods meet to make transactions. I am contacting you because I think our website matches our, I think your website matches our interests perfectly and we would like to find out more about publishing and advertising opportunities that you can offer. I'm reading very quickly, I realise. I'm trying to get through it. At the moment, we are trying to improve our brand awareness and public image. Those are in bold, by the way, just so you know. Especially among indie and smaller game developers. Unfortunately, the majority of public does not understand either our business model or how we try to make sure our customers can safely purchase digital products. 
We want to make sure people understand we do everything we can to support gaming community. There's very poor grammar in this, I've just realised, now I reread it. Uh, and that we introduce every possible method to assure every side is satisfied. Okay, this is an expert. We have written an unbiased article <laughs> about how, quote, selling stolen keys on gaming marketplaces is pretty much impossible, end quote. Okay. And we want you to publish it on your website without being marked as sponsored or marked as associated with G2A. Some places that actually does break, maybe not a law, but it does break some sort of uh, code of ethics because you have to, again, if it's been content provided by, or pre-written content or advertisements, for example, provided by a company, you have to disclose that it's an advertisement. Hmm. Well, it's just like anything. If you're using, yeah. if you use research for, for for your papers, you have to quote where that research has come from. Especially if you take out yeah. sub top context. Yeah, it's yeah. like on podcasts are a good example. Like this podcast is brought to you by my white T-shirt. Look at this, white. Buy a white T-shirt. Under Armour. Oh. So you need to try and get a sponsor from those guys now. See. <laughs> They've got Dwayne Johnson as a sponsor. Yeah, you fucked or, is, or are they his sponsor? Either way, he still makes them his bitch. Yeah, you're not really going to... Yeah, yeah. That's, no that's chance. Good point. Uh, below, I attach an excerpt of... So, he actually attached the article as well. Uh, the guy just posted... The guy who's uh, in question, Thomas Faust... Faust? Faust? Thomas uh, just posted this on Twitter. Ha, 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 ha. No. Fair play to him, yeah. Um, now, G2 have actually responded to this and said that it wasn't an act of the company, but it was apparently just this one guy. The individual employee yeah. um, mm. authorization. I'd say that too, though. If I, was I company, would as well. Yeah. Yes. That's, a, that's a good way. Oh, shit. Oh, sorry. You know, okay, you need, you need a tissue or something. No, I'm good. I'll just have some more my beer. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this is, again, G2 has been in a lot of... Well, they've been in hot water in the past. They're not any stranger to uh, controversy. And it seems like they're up to some new tactics. I haven't really seen anything like this from them before, as far as I if memory recalls. Goes about, I think, quite a lot, but yeah. Just as you say, it's ethically wrong. Mm, yeah, definitely. morally wrong. Um, again, it's caused a massive backlash within the gaming community. I feel like it's just going to blow over. I mean, nothing ever happens. Well, as a green, I think they've, the the kind of nail on the head is is the the, the lack of accountability. Mm hmm. Yeah, this is it. They can very easily shift the blame to say it was just with one it's guy. Just with that, it's just he has like... been dealt with. I'm going to say, let's see what they said. They said um, he will face strict consequences, as this is absolutely unacceptable. They're upset that he was caught. I think that's ten people. Ten people they sent a proposal to. Some random employee isn't going to send a proposal to ten employees, uh, to ten companies, and they'd be like, "Oh, that seems on me." It's a yeah. I feel like I'd, I'd like to be a bit more involved in this, but you can't figure out. You can't find things out such as how long has this guy been working for G two A? Is he new? Is he trying to sometimes get his foot in the door by you know, somehow? I don't think you're going to find that out. No, I don't think I will. I'm not. I'm not. A, I can't be asked being a journalist. So there you go. There's, there's too much legwork involved. But there you go. G two A. Um, naughty. Up to no good. How, how dare you? I just read some of your notes actually, and it was quite. Quite interesting. I just read them. Um, I missed this when I first read the, the the thing you sent through to me. Um, developers are looking less impressive compared to bootleg and fan created submissions. Right, that is slightly sensationalised as far as the title goes. But okay, so the first one's actually. But on it a positive is true note. though. Yeah, it is true. Yeah, that is true. So there's two main points to this. The first part is um, Resident Evil Three, a game that you haven't played because you just told me you don't play Resident Evil games. It's a pretty good game. It's more action than horror, I would say. Oh, I know. I, I, have, I have seen it, and I know what it's all about. I just never got around to playing it. So some small team of um, people who just really enjoy that game decided to make it a high resolution. It tried to remaster it in a way. Of course, they haven't. Normally, when you get a remastered game, they always say the same thing. It's built from the ground up. We got this game, and we built it from the ground up. Did which you, means that they've just started with a whole new engine. And they didn't say that about Halo. They should have said, did they not? I'm sure they said it somewhere. No, they said they've kept the original aspect of the game and made it look ten times better. Which Halo was that? I think it was for the original Halo. I could be wrong. No, because you could swap between... That's okay, so sometimes you just upgrade the textures. Sometimes you make things look a bit prettier. And okay. that's what they've done with this Resident Evil 3. Not to take anything away from them. When you see them side by side, it looks very impressive. 
Um, everything looks high resolution. The models and the animations look a lot better as well, very, a lot smoother. Um, so they flesh out a lot of the game from when it came out back in 1990 something, whenever that game came out, I think. Um, good for them, very impressive. The other point is Pokemon. Your game which you love, you love Pokemon. Guess how many Pokemon there are, Mike? I have no idea. Over 800. I actually don't know myself. Over 800. That's a lot. It's a good point to make that. Okay. How many are there? I don't know myself. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I'd be a great game show host. You keep telling me, get, get the app, get the app. No. What's 8 times 5? Over 30. You're right, probably. <laughs> it is over 30. <laughs> so Pokemon Sword and Shield is a game coming out later on in this year. I think towards November time this year. It was originally met with optimism, and then it took a very swift turn towards player hatred fan hatred um so there's a lot of things that are up with this uh the biggest problem is something that i love which is called dexit dexit it's like brexit but it's with the pokedex so amazing which means that they're not going to have every single pokemon um from the well the entire national dex which is the entire roster that's not going to be in the game so okay that is over 800 pokemon however they already have these models it's not as if they have to do it all from scratch. They had it from the 3DS games, and they just have to add a bit of polish to that. Maybe I'm oversimplifying, but is it the same developers? Yeah, it's always the same. Always Game Freak. Yeah, um, always been Game Freak since the original ones back in the 90s. And they could, given the time and effort, they could do this, but they opted not to. But then their argument contradicted itself because their argument was we wanted to do new models to make them look HD and very nice. But then the models that we've seen don't look very impressive. And the actual content that we've seen looks worse than Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which oh. came out two years ago. Apparently a Chinese knockoff is doing better than the I'm original I'm going to show you this, actually, yeah. I'm going to show you this bit. We're going to see another... I've got loads of links to there. So... All links will be in the description. That is the bootleg game. I just want to say... So what you can see is proper, realistic, almost video game quality animation which is quite impressive this is not a mobile game by the way um it's pretty decent it's really good yeah uh, much more impressive when it comes to like the electricity coming off the pikachu um and then the magmite if you notice actually just falls apart really oh, yeah. cool however i'm going to try and find one particular comment because it's actually lists give me a sec i should have done some more uh, preparation let's talk amongst yourself so i'm just going to uh here we go okay so i think this is the one What's the goddamn advert? That's playing on the podcast. Is it on the podcast? Okay, let's mute it. We can skip all. We'll just cut all this shit. There you go. No, not this one. I would cut this bit. Just cut all this out because this is this is dead air. Okay. Okay. So this is what we got. So this is actual animation from the upcoming game. He just did a kick. Yep. There he goes. Oh look, they're flying. How's that flying? Yeah, this is why people are pissed off about it. And if you don't notice, look in the background. Everything's great. I mean, I know it's supposed to be set in England. I get it. But it's not always that bad. I mean, it's been quite nice this week. It's been, it's been rather warm, I'd say. So, yeah, this is Pokemon of... They've been in a bit of uh, hot water with this. A Game Freak and a Pokemon Incorporated, or Pokemon Company, I think it's called. Getting a lot of flack because the game just isn't up to... What you would expect a game to be released on the Switch. Um, as an example, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu came out last year and it looks a damn sight better than what we've seen from that. That looks depressing, I'm going to be honest. So, yeah, there I you go. Put me to sleep. I think it's just because I'm talking about Pokemon. Well, that as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Microsoft are going to close accounts. Yeah, so if you've got an account on Microsoft and you've not used it for two years, uh, it gets closed. Any counts with remaining credit, so if you've got any money on the left, you're not going to lose that, that's still going to exist. Um, but if it's just, again, I think they're just trying to filtrate all the shite that's just never But then is that going to count if, say, you've had two years of subscription and you've not played a game? Are you going to be classed in that? If you're still paying for Xbox Live, then no, it's not going to get rid of it. It's going to keep it because you're still paying for it. But if it's just an account, let's say you made an account a couple of years back and then just genuinely forgot about it, and there's no money on there, there's no subscription or anything like that, it's gone. Um, just a word of warning to anybody who might have an account that is two years old and you haven't touched about. I might have just reminded you about an old account. You're welcome. 
there you go. Yeah, because there used to be Microsoft games you'd play on the Xbox, uh, well, on, on any platform, you'd have to log in on a Microsoft account. Yes. There isn't much of that anymore. Well, I still, this is the confusing thing for me, so I don't use an Xbox anymore, but I play on PC, and sometimes the Xbox app notifies me about games that I've played on Steam, so I don't know how that works. I'm not sure if, am I still active? I have no idea. Cool. I'll be paid for it still. I'm not paying for Xbox Live, no. So I guess not. I don't think I have any. I might have, maybe I might have like two pence on there. But you'll be using it for, do you use Microsoft, like the, the emails? Oh, you know what? I do use, I guess I've got, because I've got a code for Gears of War. So I don't know. I, I, I'm not too sure. Um, check your accounts, guys. If you haven't played them for a while, just there you go. Have a look at them. Uh, the only last thing to talk about, which you just admitted to me that you've never even heard of, which is bewildering, Cuphead. It's a beloved game. The animation is very, very impressive. It's getting its own series on Netflix. I'll be honest, I haven't played it, but I'm very tempted to pick it up and have a go of it and then get involved with this series. No, I like, like a good a good animated series. I don't know why I like animated comedy. It, it makes me forget about the real world, which is shit. I can't remember what last animation I watched. I watched a couple. Archer. No. Rick and Morty. No. Final Space. No. I watch Supernatural and things like that. But it's not animated. No, that is an animated. No. no, those are real people. Decent things. Sci-fi films. Mm. Lots and lots of real people. But no, there are there give, are very good animations. Give stuff. give give Rick and Morty a try because that's actually Arch is actually a really good start as well. You like yeah, Arch? Yeah, Arch is good. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good stuff. And you've got nine seasons to go through with that. Oh, yay. Archer has about nine seasons that you can go through. Um, they're all on Netflix. And yeah, give it a look because it's, it's actually pretty good. It's genuinely funny. Um, they have lots of fun characters. Yeah. And alcohol. Loads of alcohol. Oh, you want to drink after watching that. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Cool. Needs to get warmed up. Well, that's it for this week, I think. I think we've covered a lot of yeah. the gaming industry's yeah. top topics. It's been quite quiet for the gaming industry this year. This year? This, this week. week. This year's been this year's been okay. It's been yeah, a bit of a mixed right, bag, yeah. but it's been all right. Yeah, yeah it's been on the whole, right, yeah. we're only halfway through the year. More than halfway through. Well, yeah, but the best bits are yet to come. Peak is, yeah. which is yeah. Christmas time. It's all going to be good. Yeah. So that's it for the gaming news. Uh, as I said, for the channel news, we've got Space Engineers coming. We've we had the first episode, and the first episode went down well. Uh, the second episode's actually not going to lead off from the first episode. Um, we've got a new story going. Where another YouTuber has actually joined me on Space Engineers and he has challenged me to um, do a two point, sorry, two person view style game. So you'll see from his perspective and from my perspective. Oh, right, okay. Dual perspective. So the starting opening intro is going to be me shooting him down, me crash landing, we both build bases, both trying to battle up. And uh, three of my friends have also agreed to um, do pirating. So they're going to build up as well alongside us and they're going to attack us. And uh, it's going to be quite interesting. So that's to come. Uh, seven Days to Die. I have the final whole base nearly done. Uh, you don't play Seven Days to Die, have you? No. That's a good game. Maybe I'll get it one day. Should try it. Possibly. Well, mm -hmm. the new server goes up soon, which will also be available for the public uh, once we've completed our recordings on there. And then uh, the Space Engineer server is also available to the public now. Do you keep all these structures up on the servers when you put them up? Or... Oh yeah, yeah, cool. Right. Yeah, everything's so like there. a little like a museum tour in a way. It's a lot <laughs> Almost, tour, so, yeah, 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 that's pretty cool. Yeah. So if you're interested in that, hit the Discord in the comment section below. Um, the Indie Monday I missed this week's Indie Monday due to work, uh, but I'll be back next week. Uh, so I'll be seeing some more of the indie games that we've got coming. We've got a lot on my list, lords at the moment. Um, but I think that's about it. There's a great little game I like to play. I don't think many people know about it. It's called FIFA. Right. It's great. I put so much money into it. Accomplishment. But well, you've not put as much money as them kids. Five you know what the dollars. weirdest thing about that was? The strangest thing was that I read through some of the comments on this when I was on different sites, and some and I don't understand these people. Someone actually put because um, it said they drained the parents bank account and five hundred and fifty dollars is a lot of money, you know, to me at least. To anybody. Yeah. yeah. But someone actually put up a comment saying, Oh, oh for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god start again someone actually put up a comment saying we we'll start again because you've got your head in your hands like you face palm me <laughs> alright it's probably about right with FIFA yeah. someone actually put up a comment on this site saying 
I thought they actually spent a lot of money. And then they said something like, I thought they spent thousands. It was only $550. I'm like, who the fuck are you to think that that's not a large amount of money? It's a large amount of money to anybody, that. Yeah, it's daft. If he doesn't think, I mean, I'll take $550 off him if he thinks he's just gonna, he's gonna piss it away. Give it to me. Yeah. I'll have it. Yeah, I'm Let me piss it away. Sure, we can find some way of spending it. Yeah, you need a new light bulb. Yeah, you blew my light bulb. <laughs> no, your socket blew your light bulb. That's why you're all shiny on one side of your face. Yeah, I'm, I look so overexposed. Shiny. Oh, it's a good job this isn't. That's why I have to step back because of my chrome dome. <laughs> <laughs> So you start to see like the gaps in my hair, which I'm a little bit concerned about. You're getting thin. You're getting yeah, thin on top. Not been long until you like me. <laughs> Way to go. Oh. Bold and bearded. Still. And a good shout out to my beautiful bearded baldy Sephian who uh, left me a nice comment on the last episode as well. Hopefully leave another comment on this and it'll just be an endless cycle. A cycle of chrome <laughs> dome comments. <laughs> yeah. Well, we gave him a shout out last week on uh, something we were doing with so. Uh, Yes, we're going to get some YouTubers in to do some interviews. Cool. Look forward to that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it from us then. Uh, if you agree with anything or disagree with anything, then you can leave a comment below. I will uh, ignore it. I, I, you know what? Hit me up on Twitter. Cause... You'll ignore it anyway because you're not looking at the comments. Oh No, I actually me. did look at some comments. Hit me up on Twitter because yeah. I actually respond to people on Twitter. Uh, D-U-K-M-I-E-S-T-R. S T E R Duckmeister. You know it's just easier for me to put it in. Yeah, type it because it's a, I've misspelled it and everything. So you know, there you go. All if relevant, you see, all relevant links will be in the description below. If you see a profile which is mostly just me complaining at companies and Wigan Athletic, that's it. That's me. I'd complain as well. Yeah. No, every time I need to, you ever do this? Every time I need to complain about something, do it on Twitter because they are really quick at so unless you're my Hermes or Hermes, whatever Hermes. it is, they just don't give a shit. No, they do not give <laughs> a shit. Your, your driver just crashed his car through my door and then put a flaming bag of dirt on my garden. I don't care. It's not my problem. It's not my driver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a zero on contracts. I don't give a shit about that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it from us this week. Uh, we've covered most of the things from this week's gaming co community. Um, hopefully there'll be a, something interesting next week. Next week we'll talk about... Um, we'll talk about Cuphead. No. Yeah, we'll talk about Cuphead next week. Is it not? Is it even on next week? It is not. No, but we'll it's start it. We'll just continuity. We'll talk about Cuphead. Well, there'll be no microtransactions next week. There will not. No, I'm going to try and avoid it. I'm going to try and do a week <laughs> where we're not talking about that. God um, damn the microtransactions. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for listening. I've been Mike, and I've been Adam, and this is the Rugby Podcast. Bye. <laughs>